Happy Wednesday. So yeah, we have uh, two very short hours here to uh, get done what we can. Um, and what, so I'll just to kind of go over what I hope we can get done. Uh, let me find my notes from you. So uh, do a little review, kind of uh, talk about the uh, objects and trees exercise and any questions um, from that. Um, then we will, uh, once we've done some little review and clean up on, on what's what's covered so far, we'll uh, do a little bit of, of warm up with uh, using Git reset uh, again, um, because I know that was covered really quickly. So even with the objects and trees uh, stuff, it I, I want to make sure that that's really settled in because it's so key to uh, everything else that you that you do with Git. Uh, and then probably would be time for break at that point. Uh, then we will um, dive into merge conflicts, and we'll actually use Git reset to create a merge conflict. Um, just to get again get more familiar with Git reset as well, uh, and then we'll start to really point toward uh, project work. To do that, we'll uh, talk a little bit about pull requests, um, and by the by that time, you should have a foundation for understanding how they work with branches and whatnot. And then there's GitHub has a um, a facility, a project facility, basically a board you can use. So I'll I'll um, introdu introduce that. You can use that or not for your team if you want, but uh, it's really low overhead. So um, I find myself using it quite a bit, actually. And uh, then, yeah, then turn you loose for a, a while to work on the project with those tools. And then uh, take a break. And at the end, we'll touch on rebase and a couple of ways you can use rebase to um, improve your your life and your Git experience. So, uh, all right. So with that, um, any questions, I guess, uh, from, from the objects and trees exercise? Um, show of hands of who got that done. I experimented with it, but from my understanding, it, it kind of just showed you um, a lot of the, the commits and understanding of um, kind of how Git flows. Am I correct? We weren't, we weren't supposed to like create something new, were we? No, just just work through the exercise. Uh, it has it walks you okay. through, you know, doing doing some uh, Git add, Git commit, and uh, understanding what objects you're working with when you're doing that, and then um, and then kind of backing up. And you know, backing away from that commit and, and understanding how the changes look in your repo. It's all it's all local. Um, I don't know if I emphasize that sufficiently, but you know, when you're committing, resetting, all that, that's that's only local operations. Uh, you're not you're not pushing or pulling from any any remote place at that point. Can, of course, we'll have implications down the road how you do it, but. Just with these operations, it's all local in your repo. So any other questions, comments? Yeah, Chris, I just had a question because one of the, um, the assignments had us go into the dot git, um, I believe, directory. And I've accidentally initialized a git repo in some somewhere I'm not supposed to before. Would it be advisable to go and CD into the dot git and then remove that git repo from that folder so that it kind of undoes what I made a mistake on. Yeah, if you feel confident uh, undoing it, go ahead. Otherwise, I would suggest nuking it from orbit and just cloning a new repo just to make sure you're all on the same page uh, with with the rest of the rest of the session. Uh, yeah, you yeah, def definitely that could confuse Git if it has a repo inside of its database. Uh, there are ways to have a, a repos inside of Git repos, but it's a very specific feature called submodules and a, a whole set of commands to manage to manage that. So um, you can't you can't just make one and expect it to work in general. Uh, okay, good question. So why don't we then um, oh also I guess the uh, I put a link on 
I think it was yesterday up up about the um, the the collaborative workflow we did, and basically took those diagrams, sequential diagrams, and put it into the uh, the class um, session notes. Did did anybody get a chance to look at that? Any questions about that? I'll actually go through that right now real quickly just to warm us up here. So where am I? Where am I? All right. So uh, what I like to do is bring up both of those next to each other. So in this first side here, I added a section, break down a simple workflow. This is up in the Git Basics team project. Uh, MD book. And so it's got notes for those steps that I went over on the iPad, um, but you didn't have the iPad. So I took it and um, basically made it into a little kind of a, almost a movie. And what, uh, what may help understanding is to go through that movie along with these steps and just kind of blink back and forth between them to see what you can use the right and left arrow keys to see what changes back, forward, back, forward, so, so on. And then um, keep going, right? Before the push, after the push, before the push, after the push. See how the see how the, the branch pointers and the origin main tracking branch moves locally. Um and then here we come into the picture over here after they've pushed. And then we start the first part of our pull, which is a fetch. So before the fetch, after the fetch, before the fetch, uh, blinking is annoying. Okay, there it goes. And so notice that origin main, my pointer now move, now gets updated. This one didn't change on the on GitHub because it's already there, but now I now I have an updated view of what's on over there on GitHub as far as where the main branch is. And then the second part is the merge. Whoops, too far. Okay. Before the merge, after the merge, before the merge, after the merge. Okay. And then finally, um, I push back to GitHub with a git push origin main. So for what that's worth, there are some, some notes about what's going on in each, each, each uh, phase of that. Uh, any, any questions about that part before we move on? Yes, so I'm a little confused between the, the get pull and the get, get fetch. Aren't they both? to update you with the most latest information or what, what is the difference between a git pull and git fetch? Right, so a git pull should be visible here. Okay, so here's a git, so so pull is two two operations. It's the fetch and then, and then a merge. So the fetch brings over, you know, this, before we did the fetch, we had this pink commit over from our teammate sitting here in, in GitHub, they, they've already done their push and now it's up there. And then we say git pull origin main. Actually, let's go back to here. Yeah. So we say this, we say git pull origin main. And that starts this two part process off. And so the, the first part is this, the, 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 uh, Git client fetches the, that pink commit over, puts it in the database, and it updates the reference because now it knows that main is actually on the pink commit over here in GitHub, and it's no longer on the green commit. So here before, after, the fetch, just the fetch. And then uh, the second part, which is also part of a pull, is the merge. And then now that it has everything over here, now it goes and you know, tries to integrate those changes with the ones you've got. And your changes, of course, are this, you know, your main branch is here, but over here it's uh, not the same. So it has to merge those changes and make and make a new commit, which it does, which it does up here. Moves your main pointer up. This one, the uh, 
GitHub pointer doesn't move because you haven't pushed anything and updated the remote status yet, the remote state. So this, this section right here, this basically, if you were to run these two, these two commands, that would be the, the um, basically the essentially a git pull. If you do a fetch and then a merge from the same branch and uh, at the same origin or the same remote called origin. But you can do it, you can do it all at once and people almost always do. So they just make it um, a single pull command. Yeah. That clears the air, thank you. Cool. All right, so uh, other cleanup items, let's see. So simple collaborative workflow, fetch plus merge. Um, and let's I'll quickly touch on the, this uh, commit tree and blob. So um, that was part of the exercise. Um, are there any questions specifically on the Git objects? I'll cover them a little bit, but I want to see if, if people have any anything that they didn't understand from, from those objects. Uh, that object exercise. Let's take a look at objects. So, um, let's go here. Um, I think session one has some objects. So, yeah, I, I drew a better picture than I had before. You may have noticed <laughs> it's a little a little less hand hand righty. Um, so hopefully, what this gets across is uh, that there are there are these three different kinds of of uh, of objects that are that are in the Git repo that you're working with. So when you when you have something that you're looking at with a history, uh, we're taught we're always talking about a commit. If it's in the history, it's a commit, and the commit contains um, these other objects. One of them being a tree, and uh, that's the trees are what we're going to talk about about next. Um, but the tree just has a, li a list of na of files and or directories, and a directory in 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 um, this Git object model is is another tree. Uh, or it can also have an actual file content. In this case, this you know represented by this this uh, scroll. So that that's called a blob. That's the third type of object, and it's only content. It's no metadata. You know, the tree has some metadata about permissions here. Uh, it has, of course, a list, and then names of other directories or files. That's the metadata you see in a tree. Uh, commit has metadata, including a pointer to its parent. Uh, which is in the form of a SHA. So if the SHA is DEF, then that's the commit it's pointing to down here. And that that's about it as far as the object model. There's a couple very minor variations um, that have to do with tagging, but you know that's essentially what you're working with when you're doing git commands. And so now we're going to move. So that's kind of one 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 uh, axis of conceptually we're going to look at another axis which is the trees in your uh, local uh, environment that work with these objects so uh any anybody have any any questions thoughts on that before i move on yeah i just had a quick question about the shot itself you said that mm -hmm. uh links you to a pointer that now has the uh, location of all of these objects. Is is that how that works? Yes. Um, yeah. The SHA the SHA is the pointer. Actually, we we talk about Git being content addressable, and so what that means is that the I haven't talked about this, but the great question. Uh, a SHA is an algorithm for taking content, like for instance this blob, and it runs the SHA algorithm on, it, and it comes up with this with this this number, this, you know, this 16, um, this hexadecimal string, which is the SHA. 
and it's and it's unique to the content. So if you run a SHA on two files with the same content, you'll get the same SHA back. So that that is in fact the address based on the content. And so Git uses that to you know often save a lot of space because if you do have two files that are identical, you can just use the same SHA for the for that file without having two copies of it, for instance. Now commit, you can't quite do that as you can't do that because you have stuff in the commit that, you know, the commit content that is always going to be different. Uh, let me show you what I mean here. And you you can follow along if you've got a uh, a website context or a, I'm sorry, repo context. Let me leave this side, this terminal alone because I'm gonna come back there, but let me go there again. So I did a command in. Um, so let's go down into Tango, static website, and uh, I can do um, ADOG. So here's my head. Let's let's look at this a little bit. Uh, I think I did this in this exercise, but this is good review. So get file cat p dash p for print, and then I can just say six six one a. Encourage you to do the same as well. Let's look at what's here. So, so here's the tree pointer, right? This is this is the the SHA that is this tree. So this commit um, is all about this tree, right? With that, and that's where all your all your directories and files are. It's also about its history. So that's where the parent points. So you've got the pointing to the previous commit, and if you notice. Uh, this this is identical to up here what you see in the log when you do a, a, a git log with you know with a dog. So this this is how this is how git draws its graphs of all the branches and you know history is is using these parent these parent attributes. And then it has a, an author. And notice the author not only includes uh, me but also a timestamp of when that happened. So this is a Unix timestamp. Um, I won't stumble around and try to de decode it, but it's a, it's a Unix number of seconds since you know 1970 or whatever. And the, so that's always going to be different with every commit. So you're never going to get two commits that are going to be exactly the same because the timestamp will be different, or um, more specifically, it's always going to point to a different parent. So you'll never have two commits with the same SHA. It just, in practice, doesn't happen. Um, does, that, does that help? And you can, you know, you can keep poking around in the different SHAs, right? You can, you can look at the tree here and see kind of as, as I was representing up here. So here's the, here's, this is pointing to, oh, I guess my diagram is not quite right. There should be a blob uh, keyword right here. So I can do, just keep digging down into the into the structure, right? And look at the, uh, was it DA 80? And if I, if I go this far now, I, that's, since it's a blob, I'm just gonna get the content of whatever that blob has. And in fact, that's all that readme has in it. I can look at README and indeed, yes, that's that is README right there. But uh, I this this cat here just looks directly at the file on my workspace. This cat file dash p looks at the file as it's represented in the git commit in the database. They just happen to be the same because my git status is, has all my trees up to date, my workspace, my index, my head. So so they should have the same content since my my trees are in sync. Uh, so far, so good. Yes, thanks. Great, great question. Okay, uh, let's move on a little further then. Um, so collaborative workflow. Oh, arrows on the graph. I don't know if I covered this, but if, if you notice my graphs, the arrows, uh, instead of pointing forward in time, they point back because they represent 
um, pointers to commits and you know in history, which is kind of you know it's how Git um, finds its way around is by pointing backwards. There there are no forward pointers in in Git. So uh, hopefully that's not too confusing. Um, you may see on the interwebs you you know arrows pointing forward and those represent you know pointers in time on Git graphs, but you know. Um, Use your best judgment. <laughs> Try to understand what they're what they're representing with those arrows. In my in my world here, the arrows point as as uh, the parent pointers back to history. Uh, okay, uh, so let's look at. Uh, somebody mentioned on uh, the chat Monday that um, you know this this one commit that we backed away from as we were doing the reset was. Um, gone because we could we couldn't see it anymore in the history so let's see if i can uh refresh our memory of what that was a little bit so we had here's a here's just a screenshot literally of what what we did uh this this screenshot here is looking at this actually there uh there this is the first thing that happened and then this is later so what we have is we had we had our head on you know 18b44ac and then we went and we did a git reset to move head back a little ways and we did a different commit so if you if you can see uh initially the 70a is the kind of where we you know where we came from it's where origin main is same over here, but now we we popped a new commit onto here because we did a git reset and then we changed and then we pushed a new commit on top of 70A. So what happened? What happened to 18B44AC is you know what's the it's the case of this missing commit here. Um, if I look at it, I'm still in this this place. Actually, let me get rid of this screen. This is where I want to be. So, so now we're kind of like where we, where that screenshot shows us, but let's see if we can find this, this previous commit. Um, and that's interesting because Git, like I said before, has your back. And this is specifically one of the ways that it does. Um, and in particular, we can use something called, this is a good thing to take a note on, Git ref log. And Git ref log shows you basically where a head has been locally only. This isn't something get, that gets pulled or pushed. It's your local audit trail of what you've done to move head, whether you've done a, a Git commit or a Git reset or a, a merge, you know, any Git operation that moves head around, it, it will get tracked here. And so, so it, and it, and it goes, you know, most recent at the top. So this is the most recent thing we've done, uh, and it tells you what commit we we were on here. So or ended up on. Uh, and so now look at, look here. Here's that here's that commit that we initially did. So there's a record that we were here on this commit. Uh, how would we tell if that commit is still actually a thing? Any ideas? 18B44AC. Can we get there from here? Pat, can you do a checkout? Okay, we could try to get checkout. Yeah, that's an idea. So if it's there, we should be able to just go 18B4 should be enough. Uh, and it, it let us do that. Indeed. Yes. Excellent. So it said it switched there. It gave us some warnings like it does about detached head state. And what does detached head state mean? In your own words.
You go any, anybody? I would assume it's it's looking at somewhere that's no longer part of the main like uh, stream of history. So it's detached from your uh, from your history. I was going to guess it's it's almost like having a new branch without being an official branch. Yeah, we can look at the log and and see what what's going on with detached head state actually. So, so here's head right. It's where we where we decided we wanted it to be. So that's all, all as expected. But notice now that the head is not actually pointing to any branches, right? Up here, before it was pointing to main. So we're no we're no longer on a branch. We are we're on a commit. So we're detached from any branches is, is what it's telling us. And it, you know, it, it, it expounds on kind of what, what you might think, want to think about this in the, in the comments. So, um, well, that's interesting. I didn't know about Git switch. So apparently they've come up with a Git switch that can uh, turn it into a branch if you can actually go ahead and make commits on this detached head state and then turn it into a branch later with git switch is what what they're telling you but yeah so there's no arrow you know there's no dash arrow pointing to a branch on your log that's a clue that you're in detached detached head so uh what and what that means is that if you do go ahead and make a commit one of the things it means. So let's let's say let's make a change in README, right? Whatever, and then we get at it, get committed, okay. And let's look at what happened. So here we did. You know, we moved right along. We're now, but we still don't have a branch. So if we do. Now do like a git checkout main. Okay, it gives us it's recent versions of Git have gotten better. It's giving us warnings now when it didn't used to. <laughs> but what it's saying is there's no longer any pointer to those that change because I wasn't on a branch. So there's no branch pointing to that change. And so now it's as if, you know, in the log as if it didn't exist. But we know that it did. We can do git ref log and say, you know, here's here's where we were. Actually, here's where we were. That new change I made that I had no branch. Now, how would I um, how would I get it back on the graph? Any ideas about that? At this, if, here I am right now. I've got this change. It has no branch pointer to it. How would I get it back on the graph if I, you know, want to see it with a dog? You'd have to do that switch command that I told you about, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah, you could. Uh, I think switch assumes you're already on that commit that you're going to switch into a turn into a branch. So if we went back there, we could do that. Um, so if we did a git checkout, and then which one would we would we say for git checkout if we wanted to get back to where we to where we were before? Uh, we went to main. So we did this. How do we get back to up here, the state? You have to check out 524A. Right. Exactly right. So now we're back. So yeah, let's try get switch. I haven't tried it, but it ought to work. And give it a branch, anything. And now if we do, well, let's see where we're at. So now notice our head is now pointing to a branch called TMP. And so now if we get checkout main again and do a dog to log, now it's still, now it shows up because now there's a branch that, that points to that commit. And a dog remember has it's a uh, dash dash all, which means show all branches. And so because we said that, we can see this, this branch too, because 
and this commit because now it has a branch associated with it. We could also have done just a, uh, you know, without having to go, having to go there and get switch, we could also do uh, just a git branch. Um, some other name and then give that, give that reference there, 524A. And now we've got two branches pointing to that commit. <laughs> But as long as we have at least one, it's going to show up on our graph, on our Git graph. Yeah. So that that is, uh, you know, Git Git ref log is is a key takeaway there. Uh, the, the fact that that the commit doesn't go away just because you don't have a branch pointing to it is another key takeaway. It's it's still there in the database uh, unless you do something explicit to prune it. It's gonna it's gonna be there, so you can you can get back to it. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Let's let's go into Git reset a little more and then um, take a break. Yeah, and then we'll talk about merge conflicts. So. Get reset. Um, where do I want to? Let's let's poke around in the um, that object and trees exercise a minute. Um, <laughs> and as, and focus down toward the end. We've talked about the commits. Pretty much covered some some stuff here. It's. Worth working through if you haven't already for the the objects, but it's basically more of what I've already talked about. Uh, so these trees, um, two thing, two things to to, I guess wrap your hang, hang your concepts on here are, are the the reset with those options will move, um, move these trees in different ways. Um, and then the other um, key concept is seeing the differences between those trees, and that's going to be with git diff mainly. So I want to talk about those two those two ideas here. So let's uh, let's 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 actually work through this exercise of moving a change forward and backward through the trees because it uses git git reset and git diff. Uh, how many how many have already done this part this moving the change forward and backward through the through the trees and get a show of hands if, if you've done this already on your own okay i'm not seeing any hands that have that have said that they've done this so that's let's let's all do this together so Share the screen again. Bring up a terminal window somewhere. You can be in your own repo if you want. And uh, just to be clean, let's do it with a uh, new branch. So we can uh, leave it, leave it, leave it separate from what we do next. So okay. Uh, how's how best to do this? Let's let's go this way, and I need enough space to type here. So here we are on your you know you're in your team team's repo. Uh, you don't want to get first. You do a dog to see where you're at. We are on main. Uh, how would we get onto another branch? Check out. Okay. Uh, and what else? It's... You just name the other brand. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that doesn't quite work. We're missing one, one thing. We've got almost everything we need. We dash don't... B. Say again. Is it dash B? Dash B, yes. 
So that's how you create the branch you're going to switch to. And that also points out an, another uh, uh, initial trip up that people see with Git is you uh, making a branch. You can say Git uh, branch and then new branch, but that doesn't go, that doesn't put you on the branch, right? If I say Git branch new branch, that works. Yay! Guess what branch I'm still on? Main. <laughs> New branch is here because I haven't put it anywhere else. So it starts from here, but I'm still on main. So if I keep making commits, you know, here, I'm, they're going to go on main. Uh, and I'm just going to go off, you know, on main instead of putting putting them on a separate branch. So I'll end up, you know, polluting main with my changes, if you will. Uh, and that will happen. And when it does, then you'll know why you need get reset. So uh, how do we get on here? We already did this right now we can do git checkout new branch because it's there now and if we look at a dog notice we're still on the same commit but our current branch is now new branch all right so here we are on our new branch let's um let's make a change so um it wants us to make a change with a, an existing index.html. So we could do that. So everybody uh, feel free to follow along here. Make your branch, get checkout-b branch, and then open up index.html. Uh, not release notes, here's index. Okay. And then uh, make some change. Okay, and save that, close it. Okay, and now how do we see what we've done from the command line? How would we see that change to index.html that we just made? Get diff. Okay. Exactly right. So, yep. Exactly there. So, why does this this one show in red? Because I didn't change that line that I know of. What it shows there is if it was changed or or removed. Any thoughts? Okay, not staged. It is definitely is not staged yet. That's that is true. But I'm showing um, basically when I say get diff, it's the difference between what's in my workspace and what's in the index, which is where the staging area is, or it is the staging area. So this this is a little um, I don't know. It's a little finicky, but Git is telling us that there was no new line originally at the end of this file for whatever reason. Who knows? Depending on the editor, I guess. But now there is, and that's part of this line. The new line itself, the new line character itself is part of that line. So now, now I have a line with a new line in it. And so now I'm seeing this as, as part of my changes, along with the change I actually thought I made with this H3. Okay. Um, so, uh, now if I want to see the, the state of my different trees, what command do I use? Like what, what changes are where is what, is what I want to know. So this this is where you would say uh, I would say get status, and this this tells me where I'm at with each with each of these trees with respect to specifically this with respect to the head that I'm on. So there's nothing that's showing up that says staged. So that means that head and index are in sync, but there are changes showing up 
that are not staged, which means that my workspace is ahead of my, or different than, it doesn't know ahead or behind, it's just different than my, my index. So, um, and that's, that's status. Notice it's status, not diff. So it's not saying what's different, it's just saying this is different somehow, right? And here are the files that are different. Get diff will show me the content that's different between workspace and index. So how would I move it into, how would I bring my index into sync with what's in my workspace? Is it, is it merge or no? Uh, so merge is, is with, has to do with two commits that are already in the database. Oh. We haven't made a commit yet. So, so git add is the thing that brings my index into sync with my workspace. So here's where I would say git add index. And now if I do a git status, okay. So red, red is, a, is a key that it's my index and workspace that are out of sync. Green is a key that it's my index and, and head that are out of sync. So now that the change has moved, now how would I see that how would I see the content difference between what's in my index and what's in my uh, head commit? It's going to be a git diff, but now I have a dash dash staged. So if I if I just do git diff, what am I going to see right now? I see, I see nothing. Why is that? I think you have to specify what difference from what commits you want to see. Uh, Drew, or... Drew, Drew nailed it. So it's because I just did a git add. So I brought my index into sync with my workspace. And git diff by default just shows those differences between index and workspace. And now there are none because I just did a git add. So a git diff is going to come up empty because there's no diffs between my workspace and my index. So before before there were, and then I did a git add. Now now there are not. So the so the default git diff, you know, is going to see those two identical now. But now I've got a difference between my index and head now. So. First tree, second tree, okay. Second tree and the third tree are not okay as far as being in sync. And that can be seen by using that dash dash staged um, option. So um, it's the exact same difference that I saw earlier before I did the get add, right? But now it's moved. And now I'm seeing it between the index and head. So how do I how do I fix that? How do I bring those into in sync? The in, my index and head. Push. Uh, okay, good thought. But we're we're still only local right now. Push is push has to do with push with get, getting in touch with the remote. And we're not doing any remote work. Oh, commit. Sorry. Commit. Yes. Yeah, so commit will move my head forward to, to a new commit. Um, okay, and uh, so what is git diff gonna show me now if I do git diff? Nothing, right, because I haven't changed workspace or index, right? That's not what git commit does. Git commit moves the index into the head. So how about git diff dash dash staged? What will that show me? Still nothing. Still nothing, because now I've just made head like my index. 
so hopefully hopefully they're not beating this to death but uh, you know it's 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 important to see how these these um trees work and you know what you're what you what you're seeing in the behavior and making sense of it um and that, and that's that's what git add and commit do to manipulate them and then git diff and diff dash staged is what you can do to see the outcome of your manipulations as well as git status to see them all together so with that what's git status going to show me All caught up. Exactly. Thank you, William. So everything is in sync. That's what get status looks like when all my changes are, or not changes, but all my um, content matches across all these three trees, the workspace index and, and head. And of course, if I do a git log with a dog, I now see a new commit that represents that change that we've, we've moved all the way through of these trees. Okay, let's go the other way. Um, oh, we're running late on break. Let's let's get finish this thought and then we'll then we'll break. So, how do we get it? How do we move it back? In other words, back to where the very first thing. Let's move it back this far uh, to where that change is only on index.html in my workspace. So first, let's move it so it shows up as a change in the index. How do we do that? Any ideas? Mm -hmm. Yes, Joshua, reset. Uh, which one will be the next? Uh, okay, so mixed. So what, what is mixed the default do by definition? I believe it just moves it back to um, the index, but doesn't change your workspace itself. So let's, uh, there is a nice picture here on this, I believe. Yeah, here it is. So let's look at, let's look this up. So dash dash mixed trees that are reset. So it's not going to reset workspace, but it will reset index and it will reset head. So that will move it. Let's try it. Um, let's just use get reset. And there's one other argument. If we have no options or we let's say just mixed, what else do we need to tell reset? Uh, yeah, where we're going. So, and where we're going is we're just going to do one, co one commit back. So how would we say that? How would we speak or express that commit we want to go to? Okay, we could do it explicitly with 661A. Thank you, Daniel. That's one way. Uh, what's another way we could we could express that commit? It's not wrong. I just want to. Minus one. Okay, so uh, good idea. The syntax uh, that Git uses is um, when it to say minus one. First, you say the thing you're relative to, which is head, and then you say caret. So that that means minus one. So head caret would be one commit before head. Uh, so that, so there's that, and another way. You add additional carrots to go back farther. You, yeah, yeah. You could just do if you want two back. You just say more carrots, uh, or you could. Uh, I think you can actually use a number as well. Uh, you may see a syntax that says tilde instead of carrot, which has to do with if you have a, a merge commit, it it helps you decide which which branch you want to go down to go back. <laughs> That's when I just use the explicit commit, <laughs> and uh, don't worry about. Uh, that convoluted syntax. Um, so we're on a new branch. Another another way to express it is because we've got a branch here, we could just say main, because Git will just interpret that as a shaw, uh, you know, ultimately anyway. 
but it's very common to just say head caret, that minus one reference. Uh, so let's do that. All right, so what, uh, $10 question, what is the get status going to show us now? Are we gonna see green, red, both, neither? Red, Joshua says red, any votes for red? Okay, any votes for green and green only? No, okay, it's red. And that is because it brought it, it moved head back, it moved index back, but it left workspace alone, just as if I had made that change before doing any ads or commits, right? So maybe take a little thinking experience, but that can be really useful if you have moved all the way forward and got a commit in and then realize you, you either forgot something, uh, maybe another file should go in there, or you saw a change that was really minor, like a, a typo, and you wanted to fix it before you push the commit on out, on out to your team. So you can pull it all back and then, you know, I'm gonna use VI here just for, for quick, you know, just, just make the change you wanna make. And then put it back in there, right? And then from there on, you just do the move it forward again, get add. Uh, Get diff, of course, will show nothing because I've added it, but dash dash staged will show something. And I do this so often that I make aliases for them. So I'll use GD for get diff or uh, GDS for get diff dash dash staged. All right, so that makes it really quick to see kind of where I'm at. And now get status will show red or green. I've just done a git add. So it was showing red before that. So yes, thanks Mickey Green. So now I've, now I've put the new change forward. I basically abandoned that previous commit because I haven't made any branch pointers to it, but that's okay because I don't care about it anyway. I really want it to be this one. So, so now I'm here, I do a get ref log, kind of see my history, it's growing, <laughs> growing more and more. Uh, where am I at? Get ref log. All right. So this is my latest thing I've done. This is when I reset. So it shows resets as well on my ref log. It shows commits um, initially, that, that initial commit, which... I no longer have a point or two, but it's still there as we as we noticed. Uh, all right, uh, any questions at this point? I think we've moved them back backwards and forwards. And I think we've used get diff and get diff dash dash stage effectively. And this this little this little table, I think, is really uh, handy to kind of get it. Oh, actually, the thing the one thing we haven't done is. If I, if I just want to throw the whole commit away, what do I do? I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go home and not get anything done. <laughs> Let's abandon, abandon this work. What, what, what command will accomplish that? Have you hard reset? Mm-hmm. Hold down the power button. <laughs> Actually, that won't. It'll still be in the database when, when it comes back up. <laughs> I'd have to do more than that. So uh, what, what do I tell the hard reset? What do I want to reset to? A magnet would probably do it, yeah. Head carrot again? Yeah, head carrot. So I'm just going to go back. And that tells me now I'm, yep, I know I'm back at our familiar 661A two headings added, and it's as if 
it never happened except that git ref log will tell me that it did but my git log will not so all right uh let's let's take a break come back at uh like five after and uh pick up from there thanks guys uh any uh any questions follow-up comments from what we've covered so far with git reset and git diff All right. So um, between now and uh, 9.30, 10.30, 10.05, yes, 10.30, I hope we can just cover a little bit about merge conflicts and then uh, intro, intro uh, pull requests. And then I'll do a quick intro to GitHub projects. And I want to give you time to work on your project actually with this stuff. So. Um, We'll try to do that uh, expeditiously. So merge conflicts, let's practice. So share your screen. Uh, here's a, let's, let's follow along in this exercise uh, if, you, if you can locally on your, uh, your own environment. I want to walk us through a process of creating a merge conflict. Um, from the command line. And I think uh, Visual Studio Code has tools to deal with this, but it will all be wrapped around what we would do from the command line. So I want us to understand this behavior because UIs just wrap around it and uh, this is what's going on under the hood. Sometimes the UIs will not actually reflect what exactly is happening, which is another, another reason to know this cold. So, where are we? It's a clear screen, command K, and then ADOG. So we uh, are on new branch. Uh, we just threw away that commit. So yeah, we've got a, a brand new branch. Let's just let's just do that. Um, and what we want to do is create a divergence that is not just a divergence that requires merging, but also a conflict that requires us to resolve resolve those two different um, two different changes. So, um, what we'll do is change a file on one branch and change the same file on the same line in another branch, and then merge, and that should give us a merge conflict. So. Let's work with readme.md, shall we? So um, make a change to readme.md. Let's let's say we're going to change the second line. This is apparently readme.md has no new line either, which is why this percent is here, but we'll we'll figure that out as we go. So we're gonna leave static website here. We're gonna change the second line, put any any old text on the second line. So a couple of ways we could do that. Uh, let's just do it with Visual Studio Code and put, um, this is a change uh, from new branch. Say, so since we're on, I'm on new branch, I'll just say that. Okay, and then I'll do a get status to see. I should have done that before, but there I am. So now README is in my workspace, but not in my index. So I'm just going to go ahead and move that on through and make a commit. Um, I can do a git commit dash A. Which does the git add for me. Maybe. No, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> there's there's a there's a command with git commit, but I forget what it is offhand. Um, so we'll just do it the old way. Git add, git commit. Okay, there we are. Okay, now let me give you a moment to do that. Um, so basically, change readme. 
add something to the second line. If you're, if you're not on a new branch, go ahead, but you, you don't necessarily have to be on a new branch. But let's, uh, let's, uh, let's say you are. Okay, so anybody need more time? Let's now that we've got a change on new branch, let's make a change on another new branch. And how would I, how would I get on say um, a branch named B2? A new, a new branch named B2. Hit checkout dash B space B2. Exactly. So there we are. Uh, so that's good, uh, except that um, I actually want B2 to start down from main. So how would I, how would I put B2 Instead of being up here on this new, we're in the same place as this new branch, how would I put it down on 661A? Hard reset. Get reset, okay. And what would I tell it? Main. Okay. What did that do? Yeah, so that's, again, another very practical use of get reset is like, Oh gosh, I didn't mean that. I forgot to go to main and then branch. Just move your branch. All right now, it's it's easy to do here because there's really nothing on it. But the, a branch is just a pointer, so you can use git reset to move it around wherever you want. And uh, now, uh, step two is to so we're starting from the same place that we did with that we started with new branch, but now we're on a different branch. So now we can. Go after readme again and the second line, but now we're making uh, this is a different change on the second line. So make it make some other change on here. Okay, and verify that that's, yep, that's what we did. And then, um, <clears throat> Let's get at it. Get commit it. Okay. Let's see how we have now. All right. So we made a change on new branch and we made a change on B2. Give give everyone a moment to get to that point if you haven't gotten there already. Okay, so um, we should at this point have readme.md uh, with a change on the second line on each of these branches, but that second line is not the same between those two branches. So how would we invoke, uh, how would we merge? Branch B2 and new branch.
we recall recall the git pull that we did earlier um the second part was a git merge so we're not doing anything remote so we don't need fetching because everything is already local but we do need to merge these two changes so git merge um is with respect to the branch you're on so for instance if i if i'm on what branch am i on I'm on B2. So if I want to merge new branch into B2, meaning that the merge commit will be all on branch B2 when I finish, then I just say git merge and give the branch I want to pull in to where I'm where I'm currently sitting, if that makes sense. So this will git merge new branch will pull new branch into where I'm at, which is on B2 branch. And sure enough, if everything has worked wrong, just like we hoped it would, um, we've got a conflict. So um, at this point, it's fun to just to kind of look around and see where things are at. What does a conflict look like from the... Okay, nothing much shows up here. What about with git status? So the log still, of course, no, no commits have been made yet because we're in the middle of a merge. And git status tells us that, right? You have unmerged paths. Um, so, and then it gives us some instructions about how to resolve those paths. Uh, I believe if you were in Visual Studio Code, I don't work in there much, but if you if we were to go in there and open this this place that we're at. Are we on static website? We are. Visual Studio Code should give us a way to do things visually. So, yeah. So notice, notice if we're in code, it gives us these kind of buttons up here that lets us do different different operations on this text, but um, let's not let's not do that with the UI just net just yet because we want to understand what what is going on here. So if we actually look at the readme that in fact is exactly what's in the readme. Git has actually added cruft to our readme to show us what it needs to what it needs to take care of. And so the specifically the uh, you know, the the Left caret shows the the head, which is the branch we're on. So, so that so basically the left side, if you will, is the branch that we're on and what what that content is. And then the equals is the div, uh, uh, division between the left side and the right side changes, and then followed by the the content of the right side, and then finally. Uh, Delimiter saying this is the end of changes, and th those changes are from the branch we're pulling in. So it's important with merge commit to kind of understand exactly what's coming from where. And um, once once you have that down, then it's uh, much easier to figure out what you need to do next. So um, at this point, we can we can edit it directly, or we can use some some of these buttons here for in Visual Studio. Um, I usually just edit it directly, and you can just get rid of stuff that you don't want. So in this case, we could take both changes, or we could edit it any way we chose, as long as we, you know, save save the result. So, so there's the result, and now we tell get about that re that result. We tell it about the res resolution. I think it mentioned it up here. Yeah, um, right. Git add file marks resolution. So literally, we just do git add readme. And now, and it's just a normal git add. It's, you know, it's nothing special about it with when you're doing a merge or not. It's still the same git add. So git diff, as we said before, because we've done a git add, will show nothing because now those two, again, Workspace and index are in sync. Git diff stage will show something. 
And interesting thing about this, before when we ran git diff staged, it had one commit in play. Now it's got two. So um, what is it showing me the difference with respect to? Well, you can look at, I believe, let's see what it exactly is showing us. So it used to be this, so that would that would be the new branch. And then it's this is the result that, that's coming in. So it takes a little bit of staring at what's happening to to see what it's what it's about to do. But you can use uh, you know, use git diff stage to to regardless to see what it is you're about to commit. And then at this point, you just get committed like normal. Um, <clears throat> you can give it whatever, whatever commit message you want. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now you've got a merge commit. So uh, again, let me... Any, any questions up to this point? If not, let me give you a minute to uh, go ahead and work through that exercise of running the git merge with a with resolving a collision. Okay, anybody need more time? Any questions? Okay, if not, then let's uh, let's talk about pull requests for a minute. Okay, so this is actually, um, I don't know if you believe me, but this is one of the easier parts of Git because it's <laughs> it's it's more GitHub than it is Git. Uh, the pull request is a kind of a social coding rat construct around Git. Um, so where have I got the write up on pull requests? I think it's in the end of session one, actually. Branches and PR. So, yes. So, pull requests come from the the back basically GitHub being an open source platform. Um, th there was a a need to accept changes from people that you don't know and 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 therefore don't trust. So, um, 
when you talk about pull requests, that that's not a Git command. That's that is a GitHub command, and <clears throat> correspondingly, fork is also a GitHub command. So when you fork a repo, it's 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 uh, kind of like a clone, only it stays on GitHub. So you know, you fork somebody's repo that you want to make changes to, but you don't want to bother them uh, right away. Make a copy. It, there's a, a, a network that's created. You know, you, you get a connection on GitHub to that original repo, but you have you have your separate repo in your place, but it's still on GitHub. And you still have to clone it, clone your own fork because you want to pull it local to work with. So that, that's a fork. Um, and then a, a pull request is um, basically when you're going the other way. So you have you take your changes and put them in your fork with git push and you know all that. And then you make a pull request to go over to that original uh, author's repo. And they look at your request and they decide whether or not to accept your changes. That's, that's the old model. The model we'll use is, um, kind of more for small teams like we're like we have and so we we're taking our team leads repo and we're not making a separate repo on github we're using that same repo as a shared repository so there is no fork if you will in in what we're doing right now we just your team lead granted you access now we're all we have the same repo and we can uh, push and pull however as we saw that's not um that's not much fun sometimes. <laughs> a lot of, lot of um, you know, co conflict happens. Um, so, and it's it can be kind of chaotic that way. So uh, you can still do a pull request and it doesn't quite mean the same thing as it used to in the, you know, in the old uh, open source model, but you are requesting changes to go into the, the branch. So even though you're pushing changes, um, Historically, it's called a pull request, and you are um, requesting for things to get pulled into the into the branch that's active for your team. So um, that's the shared repository model, and uh, that's kind of where pull requests come from. So uh, the way that it's done with this model is that you create typically create a branch and make your changes on a branch, and then you push push that branch up to the uh, the repo that is that is your remote or that, that you know that you is the remote that you're tracking so just like we did you know you can you can do all this and we've actually done as far as step three here down to commit so theoretically we could just push this branch and make it into a pull request so let's see what happens if I try to do that. So um, I've so far I've only pushed main, but there's no reason that you can't push any arbitrary branch. There's nothing that's special about main. So let's say let's push B2. Let's see what happens. How would how would I push branch B2 up to the remote called origin? Thank you. Yes, we even Joshua get push origin. So I'm going to do a push. I'm going to go to origin, the remote called origin, and the branch I want to push is B2. And look at that. It tells me if I have a recent version of Git, here's where I can go to make a pull request. So I've pushed the branch. That, that in itself is just a push. It's not a pull request. It just puts the branch up there, as we saw on our you know, simple collab diagram. But I can make a pull request. And uh, if you have a Mac and are on the terminal, you can hold down Command, double click to open any, any arbitrary link that you see in your terminal. So I just did that. And now I'm in the open pull request URL. So. That is pretty much all there is to creating a pull request, to, at least to get going on it. Uh, you've got the base branch. You've got the branch that you've got up here. 
Uh, and crucially, you've also got the diffs that go with. This is this is what constitutes the differences between main and the branch you're making a pull request on. And so then you can make some comments. Um, and also, uh, yeah, comments. Uh, you can assign your reviewers. Um, assign yourself as as a the person responsible for this pull request, and then just just create it. And then GitHub. I'm not going to go into this because we're running short on time, but GitHub will walk you through. Um, you know, the, just the, the things you can do social coding wise on on the pull request, you can, you know, push more changes to it, and it and that will show up as well. Um, so I could make make changes here locally to B two, do another Git push origin B two, and it would also show up, I believe, in the pull request because it because the pull request follows the tip of this of this B two branch. Um, a chance I'm wrong about that, but I think that's what happens. So uh, those are those are pull requests. Um, I think that the basic takeaway is make you know you have to have a different branch generally is is the way it's done, and then GitHub will uh, walk you through what to do, uh, assuming you push that branch up the way that I just did. And then when you accept the request, then it GitHub will automatically merge it into the, ba the base branch. Uh, make sure that you've got the right base branch and you know new branch when you get that first prompt, because that's uh, key to what kinds of diffs you'll see uh, for, for reviewing and request, reviewing and approving. Uh, okay, any questions about that, about pull requests? Um, you'll have more as you use them, but I, I, it should be enough to get you going on it. We're almost ready to do some coding here. So with that in mind, uh, let's look at uh, so if you're on if you're on your uh, team lead, I believe the team lead has uh, access to do this. You should have a projects tab. This is GitHub projects. So if you want to, make a project actually this is uh need to be one level up so this is the repo you can link link a project but to make one you have to be one level up in your user or org and go to the projects tab here so it's literally as simple as clicking new project uh, i usually choose a board but it does it doesn't matter whatever works for you and um uh, Then you type any old title for the project, and it makes yours makes you a board <clears throat> to which you can add items. And it makes a card that you can drag around. In progress, done, et cetera. Put your you put your name on it, add assignees to it. So uh, I'm not going to go into detail on that, but if you want to use a board to to track your work, this is a, an easy way to an accessible way to do that. Uh, so let's jump in. Unless there's any questions there, I'll jump into the work that I want you to do with um, pull requests and all the tools we've gotten so far. So yeah, this is uh, the GitHub session two, GitHub board projects. So here's here is the lab. I want to give you another O oh, till ten fifty, uh, which is an incredibly short amount of time. But uh, Nick, are you are you there? I am. Do, do, can we go a little longer? Um, maybe till eleven thirty. I just want to give people enough time to work yeah, work out their fun. skills. So let, let's say, um, let's go for half an hour um, and, and 
start making some changes as a team. And this lab is the, these are the changes that you could make. You could, of course, make any changes you want, but this, this is a good kind of get started. And these links are links to actual changes in that sample project repo, for instance. So, uh, you know, they're simple, but they, you know, they kind of uh, get you out of the creative blank page um, state and, and doing something. So you can, I would suggest taking, you know, getting in your teams, uh, choosing these changes or others, if you, you know, feel like you want to, want to go, go off and do, do your own thing, putting them on the board and, you know, signing yourself to them and, uh, and then just, you know, make some branches, make, make a branch with your change that you're going to make, you know, or that you're going to put your change on, push the branch, make a pull request, have your, you know, have your team lead review it, I guess, or, or whoever you choose to have review it. Um, now, of course, you don't have to do it that way. You can use the simple collab model if you want, but I suggest uh, getting some practice with pull requests and reviews as, as part of this, this exercise. Um, and, you know, practice accepting your, the, the change and seeing what GitHub does to merge it in. It sounds like you guys have done some with this already. Um, so you may you may find some of this familiar, uh, which would be cool, but I think you'll also uh, encounter merge conflicts and get some get some practice with using our tools that we've studied so far to resolve merge conflicts uh, as well and kind of kind of put it all together. So uh, with that, I will stop and uh, pull for questions if there are any, and uh, if there if there are none, we'll uh, go until about. Uh, Let's say 11, 11, 10, and uh, run your project. Breakout rooms are open. I don't remember who was where, but hopefully you guys can sort yourselves out. Uh, please find your team room and then hop into your teams and work on the activity. An organization has a... Um, part of the metadata of an organization is the, the membership and, you know, permissioning and all that. So um, that that's kind of team teams live at the organizational level. So if you wanted to manage your team as a team, you could create a team in the organization and then, you know, repos under that org uh, would be uh, able to have access through that team membership. Uh, if you want to, you can move repos across organizations, but you have to have the, the access is on both both sides to do that. You know, if, you, if you're not a, a permission for that org, you can't just push stuff into it, which which makes sense. But yeah, um, collaborators are generally at the the repo level, so you can add collab individual collaborators to repos. If you want to do something on a larger scale, you would probably move up to the org level and manage people through teams. And uh, there's different kinds of access you can you, you can give to people, you know, as like org owner or member. Um, I think one other kind of like view only, I believe, is another kind of access. So gotcha. That that makes sense. Just kind of a a better way to organize or organize at a at a bigger scale. Yeah, and and GitHub only has that like that organizational level, <clears throat> and then teams there, they don't have, you know, arbitrarily nested uh, levels of orgs or repos. It's just org and then repo and, you know, they attach various ACL um, philosophies to those, to those objects, if that makes sense. And they tend to change. So I don't, I'm not, not always up to speed on what the latest nuance is, uh, but that's been pretty, pretty consistent is that, that two, two level uh, structure. All right, uh, let's, I didn't want to do one last quick exercise uh, to expose you to it. I know if there, you've got a lot that you've been <laughs> absorbing. So, uh, you know, you won't be intimately familiar with it, but at least you'll have a, have an idea of what it, you know, something that you could use should you find you need it down the road. Uh, and that is uh, Git Rebase. Uh, and this has to do partly with Dan's question about uh, squashing commits. So I want to quick touch on a couple of uh, usages of Git rebase to do things like that. 
So here are, here we are back at our sample project repo. Um, let's see where we're at with ADOG. We are actually that's not where we're at. We're somewhere else. We're, um, we're we had a static uh, website. There we were. That's where we were. Static website. Okay. So we have been, we made a branch B2. We, um, you know, did, did a merge. Uh, so let, let's simulate the situation where I am somebody else. Um, maybe, maybe I've, you know, get, I, I've been on um, main. So let's, let's say I was on main and I pushed. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, I pushed. Now that caught up. You see that caught up origin main now from 708. Now it jumped up to match here at 661. So that's where I am now. Okay, now, now let's suppose I'm somebody else. Maybe I cloned the same repo and, I, and origin main when I did that was down here at 708. So let's suppose, though, being that somebody else, I started down here, right, on 70A and made changes. So um, 70A, 70A5. Okay, so, so I'm pretending basically that I am starting here and I've made a bunch of changes that are unrelated, no conflicts, but they're unrelated changes. Maybe I've uh, made my own file here. And, it, you know, put it in and committed it. Uh, oops. Okay, so, and then I, uh, made some other changes to it. So, so basically a series of commits. Right, get add my own file. Oh, whoops, I made the, this is the one I meant to do. So anyway, I'm, I'm just, Making making changes to get to get a series of commits going basically is, is where I'm at. So I'm doing a status, get status, get add my own file. Not get to get add. Commit. Okay, so now if I do an ADOG, I've got starting from down here um, on first page 70A5. Uh, now I've got these, uh, these changes. Now, now all of a sudden I realize, oh wait, I've got to go and, uh, well, maybe not all of a sudden, but now I, I want to, um, basically I don't want a merge commit. I want to just, I want it to be as if I had just started from where origin main is right now. So, you know, if I do a git pull of uh, origin main, I'm gonna get a merge, you know, from this commit all the way up here. But my, my, my changes aren't really related. Like I, there's, there's no merging that really is kind of, the same files. It's it's all something that I could just have I could just as easily have started from any point in that history and and added my changes and that would be all that's there. So a merge commit would be com more confusing than anything because you know if I do merge, there's nothing there's nothing to do. So for instance, if I do a git merge um, of uh, origin main, which is where main is at, so. It does it, right? But it's kind of it's kind of like why is why is there all this, you know, the the graph is more complicated than it needs to be based on the changes that I have done. So 
let's do, let's get reset back to where I was and do it a different way. Okay, so now I'm back back where I was before. So rebase will let me basically take take these changes and uh, give them a different anchor point than than they have now. And right now the anchor point's down at seven zero a five, but there's no reason it has to be. It can just as easily start uh, up here from origin main. And so if I want that to be the case, then I can just say get rebase, you know, I could say, of course, main or origin slash main or 661 ABD, of course, whatever gets to that commit. And that's saying, that's saying uh, anchor, anchor this whole set of changes onto that commit instead of where it was before. So let's let's do that. And this is easy because there's no conflicts. There's no merge conflicts. It's unrelated files. They're not being changed anywhere else by anybody else. So this so this is another reason to do this. So now where are we at? So now instead of being down here, now we've now we've started from the latest place where origin main is. And so it's a much simpler sort of graph than what we would have done up here if we had had this, you know, this merge operation. Same changes, but the graph, but the graph is much simpler. So kind of kind of up to you whether you care. Um, you may initially not care and then later find out that you do and decide to, you know, be interested in rebase. <laughs> uh, that was kind of my trajectory with this. Um, so that that's rebase. That's basically, you know, give give my branch another base than the one it had before. And um, as you use it, you kind of see, you know, the pluses and minuses of it. Um, and then uh, I'll just reference cherry pick. That's that's a kind of like rebase. Only you just it by default it just takes one commit. So if you have one commit on a branch you want over here, it just grabs it. Doesn't worry about the ancestry really. It just puts it there and, and it becomes a commit for you over here as well. Uh, but I won't go into an example of that yet or at all right now. Uh, I think that's all I could, can reasonably expect to cover. Uh, any questions, comments up to this point before we, before we call it a day? If not, I will, um, I'm going to, I'll slack a link to a survey that if you don't mind filling it out, it would be incredibly helpful for me, uh, especially because I'm going to do this exact same class for my company, uh, new joiners in a couple of weeks. So, <laughs> so each, each class is, uh, participants tend to be guinea pigs for the next class. So, um, thank you all for functioning like that as well. Uh, but but it would be really useful uh, if you have any any comments and feedback. Thank you. All right, guys. Hope it helped. Uh, slap me anytime. Uh, you know, on, on Slack if you have any any further uh, feedback, comments, questions.